All right, so looking at quads, they can be a bit nastier, and here we're again solving because we see an equal sign, and they probably told us to solve, but, um, yeah, they just look tricky, and these ones are going to take a bit of rearranging, possibly. So if I look at the first example, I notice that it's a bit of a bastard of a problem because there's an x on the bottom, and so I know when I'm trying to solve things, I often want to get rid of what's on the bottom of a fraction. So if I think about this, this part of the equation, the right-hand side is divided by x, so the opposite of that would be times by x. So I'll times by x to both sides. So x over x will cancel. That leaves me with x squared is equal to... I'm just remembering that this should be slightly different. Anyways, we'll figure it out. Um, that should be a negative, and this should be a negative as well. So we have uh, minus 7x minus 12, and x squared on the other side. Okay, so again, starting off there, I times by x on both sides to get rid of my fraction, and you notice that's how I get my x squared term in here. Now that I see that I have a squared term, I'm thinking, oh, this is a quadratic. So next step for me is always going to be, um, remember they have to be set equal to 0, so I need to rearrange this so it's equal to 0. So if I plus 7x to the other side and plus 12 to the other side, I get x squared plus 7x, plus 12 is now equal to 0. Then my next step will be factoring. And from here it's not too bad, because we're back to just the basics. What times is to 12 and adds to 7? That's going to be a plus 4 and a plus 3. And then, splitting that in half, x plus 3 is equal to 0, or x plus 4 is equal to 0. We've got, in this case, x is equal to negative 3, or negative 4. And going away with it from there. <coughs> so, in the example over here, I'm noticing I have a quadratic, um, because I do see my x squared already, but same thing here, it's not set equal to 0 yet, so that's my very first step, I need to set this equal to 0. And I do see the x squared is over here, but if I decide to move these terms, I'm going to still have a negative x squared, so for me, it might be nice to get rid of that negative x squared versus over here I saw that was a positive x squared, so it's easier for me if I move stuff over towards it. So if I instead go minus, oops, plus 4x squared, because the opposite of minus 4x squared is plusing 4x squared. Thinking about like terms, that won't add to anything, so I just have 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 is equal to 0. And now that I'm equal to 0, I can go ahead and factor this. So my next question then is, can I think of a common factor between 4, 12, and 9? Well, between 4 and 12 I can, but not between 9, so I need to think about doing this the hard quad way, which means I'll take the first and the last and times them together. So 4 times 9 gets me 36. And then I need to think about 36. What times is to 36 and adds to 12? Well, that's probably going to be 6 and 6. So I'm going to rewrite this, splitting out the middle. Again, check out the video on hard quad factoring if you don't know how to do this. So instead of writing 12x, I'm going to now write 6x plus 6x. Split this in half, looking for a common factor out the front. I've got a 2 and an x, which leaves me with 2x plus 3 on the inside. And looking for a common factor down the back, I see they both have a 3, so I'll pull a positive 3 out. That leaves me with a 2x plus 3. Looking good so far, because what's inside the brackets is the same on both, so I'm going to factor that out which means I'm going to have 2x plus 3 out the front, and I'll put this part into another bracket, and it happens to be the exact same thing, which is alright. So, that's now equal to 0. Same thing, 2x plus 3, I'm going to set it equal to 0. And since those are the same, I mean, I could set 2x plus 3 equal to 0 again, but it's going to be the same solution. So here I'm only going to have actually one answer for x. This is a case where that can happen. So, Solving for x in this side, I've got 2x is equal to negative 3. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x is equal to negative 3 over 2. And that's going to be my only solution here, because on this side I get the exact same thing, x is equal to negative 3 over 2. So I only have to say it once. Looking at my last problem down here, it's similar to the first one where I've got a fraction, and that's kind of annoying to me, so I'm going to think about it. Mm, Alright, how do I get rid of a fraction? Well, what happens if I times both sides by x squared? So if I times by x squared over here, those will cancel. And if I times by x squared over here, 
I end up with 4x plus 1 is equal to 5x squared. And again, because I've got a positive x squared value here, I might think I need to set this equal to 0, but let's move these the other direction so that I can keep my x squared zero, um, positive. It just makes it easier. So I have 0 is equal to 5x squared minus 4x minus 1. Doesn't matter which side the 0 is on. Could write it on either side, but that's okay. And again, there's no common factors here, so I'm going to think to myself, all right, what's 5 times 1? That's equal to 5, and what times is to, f sorry, times is to 5 and adds to 4, to a negative 4. Set myself down here. 5 times negative 1 is a negative 5, so what times is to negative 4? Times is to negative 5 and adds to negative 4. Be a negative 5 and a 1. So here, I'm going to rewrite this middle term. 5x squared minus 5x plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. Looking for a common factor at the front, I see that I get this. And my common factor at the back is a good example here. They've got nothing in common but 1, so I literally just put the 1 there to work as a place value for myself. And x minus 1, x minus 1, they both have that, which is good. So x minus 1 becomes one bracket, and the stuff out the front becomes the other. 5x plus 1. And again, splitting those and setting them both equal to 0. 5x plus 1. Here I get x is equal to positive 1, and here I'm going to get um, minus 1, and then 5x is equal to minus 1, divide by 5, divide by 5. x is equal to negative 1 fifth, or 1 for my final answer on that one. So again, if you've got something as a fraction, don't be afraid to times it to get rid of it, and make sure that you watch your signs as you're rearranging, that you've got to get it set equal to 0. And as a bit as a trick, try and keep the squared term positive, it makes things a little bit easier, so rearrange yourself so that you end up with a positive squared term.